Hey guys, it's Alex from 7th Hour Films, back again with Doctor Who. Last time on Doctor Who, we had the Big Bang. Uh, following up on the Pandorica Opens, um... Bunch of shit happened. <laughs> uh, how do you summarize that? They were able to escape, the Doctor was able to escape the Pandorica, they've saved the Earth and the TARDIS, and... The Doctor was erased, but then Amy brought him back by remembering, and now we're here. After post-wedding, uh, Rory and Amy have gotten married, and now... But they are still with the Doctor on board the TARDIS. Uh, they did take a little break. Uh, Rory and Amy went on a honeymoon at a honeymoon planet, which was... Um, which was a planet that married an asteroid... And, um, this all happened while the Doctor, uh, attended basically his own funeral on the Sarah Jane Adventures episode, The Death of the Doctor, uh, which we watched last week, where, um, yeah, they faked the Doctor's death in order to get the memories of Sarah Jane Smith and Joe Grant in order to replicate a key to the TARDIS so that they could, uh, so that this one unit bitch and these vulture dudes could take it through and go throughout time and save everyone like that would fucking work um so yeah but then the doctor showed up and they all beat them and won and yay yeah that's basically that um just as a quick notice uh next week we are doing two doctor who episodes uh, we're doing the first two episodes, the first two proper episodes of Series 6. And uh, also, I'm going to be doing, uh, I think I have it on, we've got four minisodes that we're doing uh, after this episode. So, so yeah. Also, this is the Christmas special. As you can tell, because I have so much Christmas stuff out. Um, do I have literally anything in this room? That's Nope, nope, it's all, it all got put away. Well, I'm wearing green. And there's red here, so... Christmas! Hooray! Um... Yeah. With that being said, this is where I say no spoilers, just don't. Just don't do it. Uh, let's go ahead and get into this Christmas special. Been a little while since we had a Christmas special, so let's get into this one. Here we go. Whoa! Oh god. Oh god, what's happening? Honeymoon sweet. Oh. Oh, I'm glad I watched Death of the Death of the Doctor. <laughs> oh, and there's Rory. Wait. Honeymoon sweet. Oh. Oh, the clothes. Um it is just a bit of fun. What were you two role playing? Yeah, come on, Doc. Just Gotta save that guy with the scouter. Come along, Pawn. Yes, there they are. There he is. It's Christmas. Yeah. Merry Christmas, everyone. Yay. Ah, oh, series regular. Oh, I'm happy with that. Arthur Darville bumped up. You know what I call it? I caught it expecting something for nothing. Whoa. This dude looks familiar. Mister. Huh. Ah. <laughs> oh. Yep. Ah. That's the doctor, all right. Yes. Blimey. Sorry. Christmas Eve on a rooftop. Saw a chimney. My whole brain just went, what the hell? <laughs> Don't worry. Fa you looking all tough now. There are 4,003 yeah. people I won't allow to die tonight. Do you know where that puts you? Where? Yeah, as an adversary of the what doctor. For? You brought it on yourself. Huh. Yeah, yeah, right. Get him out of here. So the conflict begins. Ah, oh, that's right. Fuck you. You're scared of him and you're scared of being like him and good for you. You're not like him, not really. Do you know why? Why? Because you didn't hit the boy. Oh, okay. Merry Christmas, Mr. Sardin. Sorry, fish. Yeah, you know what they're like when they get a bit hungry. Yeah, fish. I know fish. 
Right. It's all thank you. Bless you once again, sir. Okay. There's evil fish. Fish. T Doctor, the captain says we've got the can't land unless a very bad man suddenly decides to turn nice just in time for Christmas Day. Doctor, I can't hear you. What is that? Is that singing? A Christmas carol. A what? A Christmas carol. A what? A Christmas carol. Oh my gosh. Merry Christmas, Kazran Sadik. He's. Oh my god, he's going to stage. He's going to stage the Christmas Carol! They're not really interested. You don't listen to people! You listen to me! Oh. That's why he's not like his father. Okay, but I'll be back. Way back. Yeah. I mean. Way, way back. Huh. He can take him through time! Whoa! He went back there! I'm the doctor. Now, your past is going to change. That means your memories will change too. Bit scary, but you'll get the hang of it. I don't understand. I'll bet you don't. I wish I could see your face. That never happened. Oh, it just did. It just did, and it also did. Right then, your bedroom. Sorry, what? Because you're not paying attention now. They got something? Yes. Huh. Okay. That's why it's cool. And he wears a bow tie. Was he always wearing that? I didn't notice. So, little fella. What do you eat? Ah! How little? Um, not, not so little anymore. So it ate the screwdriver. Big color. Yeah, it's a great white shark now. There's a shark in my bedroom. Oh, fine. Focus on that. <laughs> yeah. Man, are you sure you can get that screwdriver back? We need a fully functioning life support. You mean like an icebox? Okay. Do we have an icebox? What is it? A surplus population. Oh. Surplus population. I'm not allowed to know until I'm older. 7258. Just what I was after. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that's clever. So it's hanging on the screwdriver. <laughs> oh! Oh my gosh. Oh, did she get out? Oh, she's soothing the shark. You know, if I'm ever in the neighborhood. He comes every Christmas Eve. What? Yeah, he does every time, he promises. No, I don't. <laughs> Merry Christmas! Eight, seven, uh oh. Out of your mind. Oh, it has. Christmas. Does it still have the other part of the screwdriver? Oh my god, this is ridiculous! Merry Christmas! Yeah. Abigail's crying. Yeah. Yes. Go oh, comfort her. Crying. Are you You're supposed to talk to them? I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> yeah. Don't ask the doctor for girl advice. Because this is the life I can never have. Why? What's the number? Merry, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. This is the weirdest Christmas episode we've ever had. I, uh, I think she's going to kiss me. Yeah, I do. Go! What do I do? Well, you s try and be all nervous and rubbish and bitch. You do it. Why? Because you're going to be like that anyway. Might as well make it part of the plan, then it will fit on purpose. Off you go then. And again, don't ask the doctor for love advice. Oh man. <laughs> they went to New York. Man, all these new memories. The truth. Yeah. Guys, 
We've really got to go quite quickly. I just accidentally got engaged to Marilyn Monroe. Dang it, Doc. Hello, guys. She's phoned a chapel. There's a car outside. This is happening now. <laughs> Marilyn, get your coat. <laughs> the fuck? What are we gonna do? There is nothing to be done. But dang it, say it. Listen, why don't we leave it? Sorry, leave what? Oh, you know, this. Every Christmas Eve is getting a bit old. Why can't you just tell him? What's happened? What are you not telling me? <sighs> what about Abigail? I know where to find her. So time didn't change as much as the doctor hoped. Who are you? What are you doing here? You didn't think this was over, did you? I'm huh. a ghost of Christmas present. Oh, Amy. Eyes off the skirt. <laughs> what is it? It's. I don't understand. It's the doctor's the idea. The people. The harmonies resonate. It's not powerful enough. Why are they still singing then? Because we haven't told them. I haven't so told them it doesn't work. You have a machine that controls this cloud. Level. My other life, my real life, the one you rewrote. Now look at me. Better a broken heart than no heart at all. You try it. You try it. He has. I don't and never ever will care. And I don't believe that. And show me yeah. the future. You're different. Prove me wrong. So what do you think? He already took him to the become, future. Kazrin. Oh. Shit. Dad? This planet is ours. Come on, man, you are not your father. <laughs> if you leave the ice now. We've had so many Christmas Eves, Kazran. I think it's time for Christmas Day. Uh, okay. Well, and using well, the screwdriver as a microphone. It's snowing. Is it like actual snow this time? We're flying normally. Can you land? I can even land well. Tuh. Good. Everything's got to end some. Otherwise, nothing would ever get stopped. Huh. Uh, your phone was ringing. Someone called Marilyn. Actually, sounds like the Marilyn. Doctor. Yeah. Better our phone her back. And, and that was never a real chapel. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah, it was him as both of them. Alright, I'm just trying to see if I can recognize the names. It was Michael Gammon as both him and his father. Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> That might be my favorite Christmas special we've ever had. Oh my gosh. Okay.
That one, um... <laughs> yeah, I think that one's my favorite. <laughs> so, what what were the ones we've had so far? Christmas Invasion, Runaway Bride, Voyage of the Damned, End of Time Part One. Yeah, this is probably this is definitely my favorite of of these five that we've had. Look, excuse me. Ha 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 ha. That, wow, that was really, that was really something, man. I'm kind of tearing up about it. It's so interesting because, you know, the episode is called A Christmas Carol because it's obviously taking inspiration from that story, but taking it in its own, putting its own Doctor Who spin on it, it's perfect. It really is perfect. Because it doesn't... Like, yes, it repeats the stuff of, like, okay... You know, oh, the ghost of Christmas, past, present, and future, technically. And it's like, oh, well, the Doctor is taking up that role. Um, the Doctor is taking up that role. And Amy took up uh, the role of Christmas present. Um, but then just to... Just to completely change it. Not that, you know, like, not taking him back in time to see his childhood, but to just go back to his childhood and change it, basically. I mean, the Doctor basically completely changed this man's entire life so... And just because. The only reason he did this was to save all those people. Oh, man. Man, that, that was so crazy, man. That was so crazy, but I loved it. All right. Uh, to kind of go over... To kind of go over my notes... Um, I wrote down the honeymoon suite. So it is good that, um, it is good to watch Death of the Doctor first because, you know, he mentions in that one, um, that he sent Amy and Rory on their honeymoon and this is basically coming up right after that. I love that they just, for no reason, they just decided, well, let's put Amy back in her police girl outfit and... Rory back in his centurion suit. And it's like, okay, what were they doing? It's like, I can only assume. I can only assume they were doing some weird role play. <laughs> I can't, but I can't think of why, like, why would you need both of, both costumes at the same time? I don't know. But that is funny. Just for no reason, really. They just decided, hey, let's just put them in their costumes. <laughs> uh, but that's... Yeah, I, I like that. That's funny. Um... <sighs> I wrote down, obviously, uh, Kazrin Sardek. Um, and very interesting because, you know, they immediately make him out to be Scrooge because, you know, this is a Christmas carol. So immediately he's made out to be Ebenezer Scrooge, but at the same time, at the same time, it is different. Like, because with Scrooge, it's like, okay, um, with Scrooge. I don't even know how to, like, specifically say this, but I guess there's, like, there's nothing, like, very immediate about it. 
when you really stop and think about it, which, and try to hear me out on this one. Maybe, maybe you can make sense of what I'm going to try to say, but like, like, okay, the only immediate thing about Scrooge and his need to change is, well, first off, to just save himself. You know, if he keeps going on that path, he, he ends up, he'll basically end up like Marley. That's the point. And that's why Marley goes and talks to him. But the other thing would be, the only other thing that's necessary, like, is necessarily immediate for Scrooge to change is Tiny Tim. Tiny Tim is the only thing that's very immediate, is that if you don't change, Tiny Tim dies. But that's still off in the future. And so is him, basically. You know, you need to do this to save yourself, basically. So... So that's the thing, is that technically, when you think about Scrooge, there's nothing very immediate about him. Whereas, with Sardek, there is something very immediate for him. It's the crashing ship. The ship will crash, 4,000 people will die, if you don't change and become a better person. So that is the interesting, you know, because in order to make this a Doctor Who episode, you know, you have to have stakes and stuff like that, which, not to say the original Christmas Carol doesn't have stakes. Again, he needs to do this so he can save himself, so he can save Tiny Tim. Um, I don't know. It's, it's like, it's hard to say. Well, you could also make the argument that the reason this is different is because Sardik is not the main character. Scrooge is definitely, like, without a doubt, the main character of A Christmas Carol. But here, while Sardik is the focus of the episode, the Doctor is still the main character, you know? Which does... Which does change this a bit, which is good. So, and in order to do that, they needed, in order to make this work even better, they did need to have the immediate danger of this guy needs to change or 4,000 people die right here and right now. So, that was interesting. Um, and then the doctor basically, <laughs> I, I like the doctor putting it together, like, you know, I gotta... I gotta figure out how to make this guy nice on Christmas Eve before Christmas Day comes. And it, like, it just all goes in, it like all twists around in his head and the gears start turning. And he's like, I have an idea. And then he decides to be the ghost. Because he can do that. He can go back to Sardik's past. Which I like. I do like that. <laughs> I like that he just assumes the role of the Ghost of Christmas Past as a time traveler. Because he can do that with the TARDIS. Um, so yeah. So I did really like that. Um, and you know, he's overjoyed about doing that. He gets all excited. Which makes sense. We saw in episode 3. You know, back in series 1, episode 3. We saw how much a, how big a fan the Doctor is of uh, Charles Dickens. So... So it works. It really works that the Doctor would get just overjoyed by the fact that he gets to be the ghost. And then, so, you know, showing him, because again, what I thought was, you know, okay, you have the ability to take Sardik back in time. So, you know, take him Go back in time, see his childhood like you do in A Christmas Carol. But I like that he he changes it completely. And as soon as he he starts going back in time and you hear the TARDIS and then on the recording of the of young Sardik Excuse me. On the recording, you know, he's crying and he gets he you know lifts his head and then he turns around because he can hear the TARDIS. 
and the doctor is there which is brilliant that was a brilliant shot of that of you know we just see the doctor he closes the door you hear the TARDIS and then you just see the TARDIS appear on the screen you know in the projection that was brilliant I love that so yeah and then basically he's and then basically he just sort of upends Sardik's life you know completely changes it as the new ghost of Christmas past so yeah um I wrote down the fish the fish were an interesting concept um yeah just these fish that swim in fog in the clouds which is interesting I um yeah it's like why it's one of those things where it's like how do you think of that but they did and it's pretty great so yeah um and then the whole thing with uh the shark you know the shark basically ate half of the sonic screwdriver um which makes me wonder did he actually get a new one i mean he said he would have to because i think the shark i think the shark you know still has still has the other half of it and um and they he might have left that half of the sonic screwdriver with them you know so that would actually be interesting um but yeah the, this concept of the fish and you know he always wanted to see the fish but you know his father was like no fish you're bad and you know he smacks the shit out of him um i do think it is very it's very important it's very poignant that the actor michael gambin plays both versions but basically him and his father he plays kazarin as an old man but he also plays his father that is pretty like that is significant right there because it shows you know it shows how much kazarin becomes like his father so that's perfect just casting the same casting the same guy as two characters you know it's perfect um so yeah oh god my leg is hurting what is that sound why is my why is my laptop fan on don't be on shut up sorry about that um so yeah so having the same guy played play a father and son it, it's just perfect that's just uh, that's brilliant so yeah and you know you really immediately see like you know without the doctor he really well even with the doctor even with the doctor there he still became his father he always tried to fight it he always tried to fight becoming his doctor his doctor geez his father excuse me i'm losing my words apparently <laughs> he, he always tried fighting becoming his father which is why he didn't hit the kid at the beginning you know he, he came close he came really close and that was again highlighted when he almost slapped himself as a kid and again at the end when oh well we'll talk about that in a sec so yeah um but you can definitely see like even with even with the doctor like it's incredible that it's like no the doctor still like even though the doctor changed time it still was a while before you know the doctor's lessons and the new life could really take hold of uh uh kazran i almost said sarkon i was like that's not right Um, I wrote down the surplus population, which was an interesting way of saying that. Um, very Christmas Carol right there. Uh, decrease the surplus population. Jeez. But it wasn't exactly like, oh, well, this is just what happens to the surplus population when we get overcrowded. It was specifically that when he lends money when he lends people money he takes a family member as a hostage basically 
so that they will eventually pay off the loan. That is brilliant and dark and crazy, man. Holding a family member hostage. And, you know, you have to wonder... You know, uh, Abigail's family, they just never, never was were able to pay him back. Like, ever. It's crazy. You know, we even saw... Um, we even saw, you know, them when, you know, Kazran was a young man. And... So it's like we see them there, and then we see we saw them in the present. Uh, we saw them in the present as um, we saw them in the present at the beginning of the episode. So it's like, yeah, they never paid off the debt, which means honestly, we don't know how long Abigail was really in there. So yeah, um, I wrote down every Christmas Eve, which was interesting. The doctor didn't intend on doing that. The doctor didn't intend on doing that, uh, going back and fetching Kazran and Ab Abigail every Christmas Eve in order to have some fun. Um, he never intended for that to happen, but it just sort of happened, and it did work out in his favor, because it allowed, it basically allowed Kazran to fall in love, and honestly for Abigail to fall in love as well. And it's sort of, honestly, it was sort of lucky that that happened because, you know, like I said, the doctor wasn't planning on doing that. You know, Kazran was just like, and he comes around every Christmas Eve. What? I promise. Uh, uh, um, and then they close in and his back is like, happy uh, Christmas Eve, yay. So yeah, the doctor was not planning on that to happen, but it worked. It, it worked out because that, you know, it kind of pushed Kazran over the edge at the end. So, yeah. <laughs> so, that was interesting. Now, I and I guess I was going to say, like, you know, how long has the Doctor been doing this? Only He only did that seven times, I think. Well, no, he did it eight times after that first time they let her out, basically. They did it from the first time they let her out. Uh, before the last time, it went from 9 to 1, so... And that's the thing, is that they only let her out for one day. They only let her out for one day, so... For the Doctor, this has just been an eventful week. He has to just keep, you know, reliving Christmas Eve for a week. Until eventually, they get to California in 1952, where the Doctor accidentally marries Marilyn Monroe. Oh, Doc... How many times has the doctor been married? Like just recently, you know, at the in the end of time, he said he got he got married again. I don't remember to who. It was like a queen, I think. And yeah, so it's like <laughs> so he got married. Well, he kind of got married. You know, he was basically like, a, "Well, tell her that was not a legitimate chapel." So 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 that's funny. Um Oh, there was one line I tried picking up on that was like, you know, I mean, there was some talk about like, you know, could you do this? I'm going to try to figure out where it was about right here. I'm going to turn the subtitles on. You try it. He's had a broken heart. Why are you here? Because I'm not finished with you yet. Yeah. You've seen the past, the present, now the future. Now you need to see the future. And it's interesting. I cold, alone, and afraid. It's interesting right here. Um, you know, he, again, unlike Scrooge, which is good. They very well, they very cleverly differentiated this. So. Uh, Kazran is different from Ebenezer Scrooge, which I like. I do like that. 
but you know here he says I'll die cold alone and afraid I'm I'm okay with that so that's already an interesting little twist on it and then to show that no he's already we're not showing you your like I'm not showing you what happens after today I'm showing little little you what happened what happened to him you know Because he doesn't care. I don't get anything from it. It's just that I don't care. I'm not like you. I don't even want to be like you. I don't. I never, ever will care. And I don't believe that. Yeah. The future. Prove me you are. I am showing it to you. I'm showing it to you right now. Yeah. So what do you think? And there was a bit more to that. There was something... I don't know. There was something I miss, like... Uh, there's something I'm kind of missing. I was trying to find it. But it was something about... Um, it was something about, like, how he, uh, he... He asked the doctor something about love. And it was... It, I feel like... And I feel like that happened. Maybe you guys can help me out in the comments. Um, there was something he said to the doctor, like, well, have you ever, you know, loved and lost or something like that? And, you know, or to lose, maybe Abigail said that, actually. Shit, I don't remember. There was something about that, and I want to try to find it. Oh, okay, yeah, it was after... It was afterwards when they were when she actually got out of there. And let me go through it a little bit. My voice resonates perfectly with the ice crystals and calm the shark. Calm the sky too. Yeah. Could you do it? Could you do this? Think about it, Doctor. Could the doctor do this? We stay with you too. I, I guess it was that. You know, one last day with your beloved. Which, I mean, even just that look that the doctor gives right there. I, I bet you he is thinking back to his, what I can only assume is his first wife, you know. Because when they kind of mention that stuff, you know, it's like, oh, have you ever loved? Do you have a family or something like that? And the doctor has mentioned, yes, he had a family. Long, long ago, the doctor did have a family. Granted, from what I have seen, all I have seen is uh, Susan, his granddaughter, but granddaughter's obviously got to come from somewhere. So it makes me wonder, like, in that kind of moment, you know, when he says, you know, think about it, could you do this, doctor? Could you choose? And definitively say, basically, like, could you pick the last day to be with your beloved? I bet you that goes through his mind. And I, it makes me so curious. It, it's some, it's these, it's those little moments that makes me curious about the family he used to have. You know, he had a family. He has said before, you know, and obviously I've seen uh, his granddaughter in the classic serials. Um, but he has, you know, said to Rose and to Donna, it's like, yeah, I I was a father once. It's like, I wonder, that has to be a look of, you know, he is actually at that point, he is remembering the the family he had. And I, oh, I love those, those moments. So, yeah. And then the whole thing about, you know, Christmas future, you know, I do like the twist on that. That it's not that... He's not showing, you know, older... Older, bad uh, Kazren. He's not showing him, like, well, this is what happens if you continue on this path. But instead, he's showing the young version of him what he turns into. And he can't believe it. And the first, the only thing he says, you know, when Kazren looks around... Turns around and looks at his younger self... And he just says, father, because he thinks that is his dad. 
You know, because it, and it's, again, it's the same actor, which is perfect. It's the same actor, so it's perfect. He does, the small, you know, young version of him thinks, that cannot be me. That has to be my father. And that just, you know, wells up in, you know, old man Kazrin and infuriates him because he's like, no, I am not my father. And he goes and he almost hits himself as a kid. And if he did that, if he did hit him, then he is 100% his father. But then he doesn't because he realizes, no, I cannot be my father and I cannot let these people die. So, yeah. And then the one last day with Abigail from this new life he lived, these new memories he had, um, which is, which is sad. You know, that's the tragic thing at the end of the day. You know, we see them, you know, at the end of this episode, we see them in the carriage flying around with the shark and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, look how happy they are. But you know, this is her last day. And at the end of that, at the end of that day, she will die. And it's just so, it's so sad, man. Um, and then the last thing I wrote down was the song. The song basically opening up the sky so that the ship can land. But also, you know, all the fish come down and it starts snowing too. It's legitimate snow this time. Hello, thank you. Um, and all the fish come down and it's fine there was never anything to worry about the fish the only reason that well okay obviously sharks that's kind of scary but apparently we can get along with sharks but the only reason that there was this control over the fish was so that the father could control the people that he even called cattle you know, if you want to control the cattle, you have to control their predators. So that's the thing. Fuck, this episode was amazing. This may be... This is my favorite... Um, this is my favorite Christmas special we've had. This may be my favorite Matt Smith episode. Oh, I'm trying to think back to season five. What did we have? The 11th hour. Oh, God, I'm trying to remember them all now. Shit, what were they? I'm gonna go look through them real quick. What what all have we had this season? I'm trying to remember them all. Uh, 11th hour, Beast Below, Victory of the Daleks, Time of the Angels, Flesh and Stone... Vampires of Venice, Amy's Choice, Hungry Earth, Cold Blood, Vincent and the Doctor, The Lodger, The Pandorica Opens, and The Big Bang. I think this is my favorite Matt Smith episode so far. And I've and I've really enjoyed these episodes, but and there have been some pretty solid ones, too. Uh, Vincent and the Doctor immediately comes to mind as a great episode. But this one might be my favorite out of the ones I've seen so far. So, yeah. This was amazing. This one was amazing. Holy shit. And there's nothing more to say, really. <laughs> yeah. Um, just as another reminder, we've got some minisodes coming up. Those will either go up today or tomorrow. I, I don't know. Just keep your sub box uh, in view, I guess. You'll, you'll see when they come out. Uh, yeah, either today or tomorrow. Um, also, next week, we've got two episodes of Doctor Who. Uh, the first two proper episodes of season six, and then I think we're gonna go, I think we go to, we go back to the, uh, normal Sarah Jane Doctor Who rotation for a little while, so yeah. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. I love this episode, this is, this one was really good. 
and yeah i'm excited to see where we're going next um so yeah with all that being said i'm alex from seventh hour films and i will see you guys next time take care all right guys thanks for watching this video if you want to watch more of my doctor who reactions you can click on the playlist you can subscribe if you haven't done that already and be sure you hit that notification bell you can support me on patreon and follow me on social media links below in the description see you guys later